too. That sometimes we think our problems are so big. We think that they are more than we can bear. Amen. We think that our troubles are more than we can handle. Amen. But if you would really just take for a moment and consider, consider the fact that sometimes our problems are tough, sometimes they may be hard. Uh, but I want to charge you with three things. Matter of fact, never mind if I just put this down, do you? Let's see if I can do this without, without any notes. I'm having trouble with that. My wife told me I could do this, so I'm going to see if I can. She also told me I could fix a car. And, uh, anyway. But really, there are at least three things that we ought to consider when we begin to consider how great God is and all of the wonders of God. The first thing we have to consider is our problems. Many times we look at our problems and we say, oh my God, it, it's, 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 it's overwhelming. I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know who to go to. I call my friends and they can't seem to help me. I got a call this morning at 3 in the morning. And it was a father concerned about his son. And his son was having problems that he didn't think he could bear. Now, part of me said, well... I'm in Hawaii. It's not a lot I can do. Part of me wanted to encourage his father and tell him, well, I hope you've prayed. Obviously, he said that his son was a man of faith and he believed that he had already spoken to the chaplain, but it seemingly wasn't enough. And, and, and that shouldn't seem strange to some of us who have ever had a problem. Anybody ever had at least one problem in your life? Yeah. But, but, but let me tell you something. We go to God and we say, God, this problem is so big. This problem is so huge. But I'm not suggesting that they're not. I'm not suggesting that sometimes it don't feel like the world on your shoulders. But what I will tell you and what I will suggest to you that you ought to stop telling God how big your problems are and look to your problems and tell them how big your God is. Because when you begin to consider your problems in the proper light, in a different perspective, then it'll help you in relation to when you can look out there and say, oh my God, if God can create all of that, and how small I am in relation to all of that, then surely my problems are minuscule. My problems are insignificant in light of that. But only in light of that. You have to have a different perspective. So you got to consider your problems. The second thing we have to consider is ourselves. Sure, the Bible says that we're ahead and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. Sure, the Bible tells us that God created us just a little lower than the angels. Sure, God created us for His glory. God created us to worship Him. Sure, God created us just for His purpose. Here's the problem. Too many times we think too highly of ourselves. I don't mean just that you think you got it going on, but sometimes we think we can fix our own problems. This is a quiet sermon and we out on the beach enjoying ourselves. But let me see if I can unpack it. We have to consider our problems. We have to consider ourselves. We've got to consider ourselves because when we begin to think that we can fix things on our own, we, we've, we've, in essence, we, e e equated ourselves as unto God. We've, we've gotten to a point that we believe that we can do it. We can look at, we can look at those around us. And, and I've said this at Bible study. I said it again not long ago. That, that what happens is we're sitting in church and many times we become judgmental of other folks. We're looking at them and we're saying, oh, look at the sickness that they have. Look at the sin that they have. And we haven't considered ourselves. we got to consider our problems. we got to consider ourselves. And then lastly, we got to consider our God. I could really stop right there, but when we consider our God and consider the fact that God made all of this, God made the heavens, the earth, and the sea. And if God created all of that, and God tells us directly that he wants to give us more, then we ought to consider. I'm talking about the same God that, that fashioned the heavens, the same God that fashioned the earth, the same God that, that made and separated the heavens from the earth and the earth from the waters, that same God, the same God that was able to draw from the rock water. Do you remember how many times the Bible discussed water and what God is able to do? And here we are sitting in front of water, preparing to go baptize folk in the water. Remember, Jesus made 
wine out of water. Remember that it was by the Sea of Capernaum that he did it. And remember that it was on the Sea of Galilee that he spoke to the winds and the water. And he said, peace be still. Oftentimes, Jesus did things by the water because the water has two significance, at least two. One is it reminds us of our trouble, just as you see the waves, they're slapping up against us. But also it says that I am the living water. So how can something that God commands, something that God created, be too much for us to handle? How can the troubles that we face be too much for God to handle? Because we serve a God that's able to do exceeding abundantly above more than we could ask or think, according to the power that works in us. So let's give God praise. We have to consider our problems. We got to consider ourselves. And we have to consider our God. Amen. Won't you stand on your feet and give God a hand of praise today? I was growing up, we get ready for this time as the choir is coming, and they would say, Take me to the water. But yeah. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Be baptized. I'm waiting on the choir. <laughs> I love Jesus.
Oh. My bad.